Just with that. Okay, hey, uh, Ron and Fez, yesterday I, I was tuning in and uh, there was an uncom uncomfortable moment. This guy... <laughs> uh, one? <laughs> Have you listened to the show lately? <laughs> eh, most of it I don't find uncomfortable. I like it. Really? I just like it, yeah. I love it. It takes a lot but, for me uh, to be there's uncomfortable. a little uncomfortableness there with uh, between Earl. What happened with Earl? And I, well, apparently nothing. Uh, Ronnie is uh, always getting on Earl's case because... Uh, I don't know. Earl doesn't seem to um, do as much as, as Ron would like him to be doing, uh, which is anything. And, and, and Fez now is, for some reason, uh, in the glass booth. Fez is? Yeah. Fez now sits in the glass booth. Uh, and D Dave sits out here? Yeah. I, I don't know what the arrangement is. It's like they rolled a dice and decided to just move everyone around. What the fuck are they doing? I believe Fez is the EP now. The yeah. The producer. Executive producer, and he sits in the booth. And what, what does Earl do? <clears throat> Except fill a quota. What does Earl do? <laughs> and then Dave, does Dave work the board, or does Earl work the board? Uh, I think, actually, Earl might sit here. Ah. Is that right? Or does Dave sit there? Sam It's always all. changing. Yeah. It's constantly just musical fucking chairs on that show. I uh, may be wrong, but I think just recently Earl was moved to Pad Data Man. Oh, oh shit. So. Oh, wow, what a shit. demotion. Oh, boy. There's the video! <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> There's the video of the guy That's playing with his this asshole. Video. Is this linked? Uh, Holy yeah. shit, is that funny. He's got a wind instrument up his ass uh, when he's doing Old Christmas Tree by farting into it. It's a yeah. skater dude, I guess, right? Skate punk. It's on break. Break.com. What is it that it's, labeled as? It's also linked on opi All right, Dude very good. Dude Oh, Christmas tree. Dude, yeah. that's hilarious. He's bent all the way over. His ass is exposed, and he's got like a wind, uh, a wood wind instrument on a his butt. A recorder. What is it? What is a recorder? It, that's what that instrument is. That's what it's called, called a recorder. Yeah. Oh, okay. I did not oh, know why. that. Why? So anyways, um, Ron Fez had this Justin Bartha on yesterday. Uh huh. Who's in that? Wait, room? Ron also blames me for giving them Earl. What was he expecting? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Are, he's got to be insane. He, uh, Ron, yeah. He it, actually expected uh, to get something out of Earl. Constantly <laughs> blaming you for Earl. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, they got uh, Opie and Anthony got like fifteen, twenty guys running around uh, for their show, and uh, it was like, oh yeah, you should take Earl. <laughs> so why didn't they take Earl? They didn't want Earl. We Ron, had Earl. Ron just sighs. It's quiet. And he goes, why did I listen to Opie? <laughs> <laughs> Earl tried to um, get us to hire him for, I don't know, a long time. And finally, I'm like, Earl. And then I said, Ronnie, uh, Earl's available. Yeah. Ronnie knew. He's not stupid. No. He, he saw Earl in action over there at NEW. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this guy, Justin, comes in with an attitude yesterday. I, I don't know the backstory of this, but I, I'm... He's I'm, in the new movie. Um, uh, National Treasure 2 with yeah. Nicolas Cage. And he's a kid. He sounds like he's older than 19, but I guess he's only 19 years old. And I heard that he handed his coat over to Lily. Yeah, he just kind of took his coat and gave it to Lily like, here, you we, deal with this. Can we do that? Mm. I see you around here. I would love to just hand him my coat. Yeah, way, uh, coat. Hey, take my coat. Hang it up. By the way, Ron and Fez, uh, noon to three. Noon to three, of course. Right here on X. Very funny. Do we need to know anything else, E-Rock? No. No? Okay. So here's Justin entering oh. with an attitude. Oh. Uh, we got a guest coming in, Fez. That's right. It's Justin Bartha. He is going to appear in <coughs> National Treasure 2. Uh, here comes uh, Justin in right now. Hello. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, you're here in New York City uh, on an ugly day. Beautiful day. Yeah. This is going to be an easy one with Justin. It's, I mean, yeah. are you picking up with that? Yeah, I it doesn't like, seem to be arguing every Jesus point. Jesus Christ. Yeah. They just get into the studio. Uh, call Brain and say good good work. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Justin's here. Brand new movie out. Uh, and it's... Uh, it's a the, good movie. It's a fun movie, I got to say. Yeah? Yeah, I promise you this. You'll have a good time. Yeah. That's what they pay me to say. So that's how the uh, interview started. Oof. And what gonna, a fucking... And I'm going to point out the brilliance of Ronnie B in a few minutes here. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's brilliance. Because uh, this kid with his attitude like that, right? <clears throat> yeah. I'm listening to this going, oh my God, when is Ronnie B going to jump over the console and start choking the guy out? Because that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I wouldn't have patience for that. Uh, he'd have poker chips in his face. The brilliance of Ronnie B. Should I say it now or wait? Dingy, dingy. I'd say wait to see what happens. Wait. I don't know what happens. I'm okay. not doing this. But I'm thinking, holy crap, there's got to be a fist fight. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Right? All right, it continues. So uh, the, the last time the National Treasurer was about what? Oh, thanks for watching the movie. Uh, it was about... I don't a, know why this fucking guy came was, in here with his attitude. I don't understand. It, 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 it's almost behind enemy lines oh for you, brother. You watch this is yourself. not Bring one. it on. Bring it on. What makes for more interesting radio than For conflict? how? We were having fucking inter interesting radio. You were invited to come in uh, and plug your movie. You can. I'm, I'm going to do that right now. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to come in here and hang out with us and talk, you can do that. I thought we were all just having fun and joking around. We were having the fun and joking around before you came in. And, you know, you could take your coat off outside, too. Take fucking seven minutes to take a coat off inside. Wow. It's probably, there's a fucking show going on. Wow. This is, uh, I didn't realize that it was going to be like this, guys. I just got in. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you came in with the man right off the bat. With the man? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, you came in with attitude. Ah, well, I, I was just joking around. It wasn't a, a serious attitude. I thought that's what this kind of show was. I thought we so you'd have, oh, fun. well, thanks for listening to the show first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't see your movie, and you acted like somehow I fucking let you down. I was just joking. I didn't expect you to see the movie. You didn't let me down. You didn't let me down at all. My God. Is that it? Wow. By the way, he's 29, not uh, 19. How, oh, really? <laughs> How awful Big is difference. his voice? He sounds like a, a Nicolas... Maybe he played yeah. Nicolas Cage's son, but you can see he's trying to be like Nicolas Cage. Well, I didn't see your movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, right? Smarmy fucking douche. How would run. we have handled that? Uh, that would have ended quickly, ugly, Awfully. and decisively, like the Kennedy headshot. Right? Just done. Well, Ron smashed him. And then shamed him and told him what he did. Yeah. Um, and Dave jumped in and smashed him a little bit. It would have gotten real ugly. So let's well let's see how they how they handle it. We I got mean, one more clip and then okay. I'll ex I'll explain the brilliance of Ronnie B. Would you like? Can we start over? Can I apologize for having an attitude sure you can. with you? I am sorry, guys. I didn't mean not to have a problem an attitude at all. with you at all. Okay. Can we be friends? Is that possible? Sure. Okay. So tell us all let's about your movie. Over. Okay. It's a sequel to National Treasure which is a movie that came out a few years ago, and it's uh, starring Nicolas Cage. And uh, it's a treasure hunting movie. It's an adventure movie in the spirit of Indiana Jones. Jones. All right. Now, I did see the first one. Okay. And that one was all about Philadelphia. Uh, right? right. It, was, uh, it, it took place a lot in Philadelphia, yeah. So that. this one, what happens? Uh, well, we go international. Uh, in this one, we go to London and Paris and... Uh, you know, we uh, it's uh, a lot bigger in scope, a lot more action, a lot more adventure. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be able to get over this, are we? No. no, <laughs> no. Is it too tense for you? Not at all. I'm having a great time. Okay. That's it? That's great. How great is that? <laughs> oh, okay, we're not going to be able to get no, over this. That would have been that would have been it for us, right? Over. Right? That would have been it for us. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Ronnie to his face, Ronnie. Hey, buddy. We're uh, replaying that uh, very, very uh, tense moment you guys had on the show yesterday. Oh, from the, the kid from uh, yeah. whatever the movie is? Yeah, yeah. yeah from Search National for Treasure, Treasure too. Whatever. Right. <laughs> Way to diss a great actor, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> Ron, Ronnie, what, what's your problem? <laughs> I mean, really, I'm coming in here to promote my movie. Well, all, all I had to ask him anyway was what's Nick Cage like? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> This is the brilliance of you, though, Ronnie. Uh, it has to be pointed out. Uh, we would have handled that differently. Uh, there would have been bloodshed. Right. There would have been a lot of um, phone calls made after the show to apologize to people. Publicists and whatnot uh, publicists. would have been upset and oh, never yeah. Yeah. told us we would never get another guest again. The patience you showed. And I, I kind of, I, I, listening to it yesterday, I felt it in your head. Like I was in your brain. You decided to take this on as a challenge, my friend, and you yeah. succeeded. Uh, this is why Ronnie B is brilliant. He turned this kid around, turned the interview around, and then it was about 40 minutes of really interesting radio, and by the end of it, you guys were definitely getting along. I don't know if you would go out to lunch or any of that crap, but you turned the entire thing around. I don't have the patience for that. It would have been ugly, and, and we would have been done with this kid. Yeah, it, it takes you, you turn into high school in like five fucking seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just I, like, fuck you. Right. <laughs> But I, I had an attitude. But I felt it in your head. I'm like, 
Ronnie is challenged right now, and instead of going for the obvious, we're going to kick your ass physically and verbally. I'm going to attempt to try to turn this whole thing around. And it was well, really interesting to, to listen to yesterday, Ronnie. Well, you know, the guy is a guest. I hate to point that out to you guys. <laughs> 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 you know, that is true. <laughs> it's a guest. And I, but Roddy, I That's would, why they call him guests. But, Roddy, I would say that both ways uh, make for good radio. No, I, I agree with you. But, he, you know, here's the thing to remember with these uh, kind of people. Just because he was in a movie doesn't mean that he knows how to do radio or right. he's interesting, you know. Sure. So he, he might have been fucked up, too, just coming in and doing that. Right. You actually, the thing was, he's not used to being called out. Like that, he's probably used to being the smug guy, and people going, "Well, right. he's a little intimidating." And you just fucking smacked him in the mouth, and that really, really threw him for a loop. He's like, "Oh man, I'm gonna be treated like the douche that I'm behaving like." And, and oh. Ro Ronnie, you know when you get people calling and saying, "When you said such and such, I I almost crashed, or I I spit up my food, blah blah blah." Yeah. I, I had a real moment. I was uh, drinking coffee, and I, when you said, "Look, we're not gonna get through. We're <laughs> not gonna right. get past this. We're past this. Whatever the <laughs> yeah. the line was." I yeah. literally found myself almost spitting up coffee at that moment. I didn't officially, but I, I understand what people, you know, uh, what people mean when they say that. Because yeah. it was one of those lines that just killed me to the core. Ah, uh, yeah, we're not, <laughs> we're not going to get over this, are we? Now it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> now, uh, uh, also, we were talking about the staff over at uh, your program. Yeah. What, what is going on? I, I, I don't really understand how, the, the switching of positions there. Uh, Fezzi's in the booth. Right. Um, who runs the board? Uh, sometimes Earl comes over, but then he gets thrown off, so I, I keep him moving around. But, yeah, you certainly do. <laughs> uh, Fezzi has gone through a weird period. I don't know whether you could pick this up listening, but he would start to cry a little bit on the air. Oh, wow. I never noticed that. Yeah, he's good at hiding it. Yeah. So he got a new thing that he felt safe in the other room because it's smaller and that, more comfortable. That's a very, very healthy uh, thing that he's doing. Um, right. Instead of uh, confronting it and dealing with it, to just right. get into an even smaller and smaller environment uh, until somehow, you can't get him out of he, probably uh, his, his own house. The beauty of it is somehow he keeps the show named after himself. I don't know how he's pulling it off. <laughs> <laughs> he may be the smartest guy in the history of radio. Ron and Fez, and yet I don't know. You know, I don't hear Fez. Yet the Fez yeah. part is fading away in front yeah. of our eyes. But not his paycheck. His not paycheck. His his paycheck. <laughs> it's like Earl with an enormous paycheck. It's really like that. <laughs> Is Fez losing his mind? What's happening with Fez? Uh, he, I, I think losing is uh, <laughs> the wrong word. It's gone. Oh, really? It's gone? Yeah, totally it's gone. gone. Whether it's the cat shit uh, brain worms. Yeah, whatever or happened. Wh happened. Whatever. What? You know, He's got brain worms? Well, uh, we found out uh, through the Ron and Fez program that um, uh, cats uh, give off uh, these um, uh, parasites. Right. And they can uh, make you lose your mind. And that's why uh, there's crazy cat people. Because they have so many cats that they go crazy really quickly. Don't have a cat. That's the big Well, thing. cat scratch fever is a real thing. Absolutely. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, Ted Nugent's saying about it, but it's a real thing. But it's, uh, it's these uh, parasites that get in there and eat away at your brain. And, oh, yeah. and now uh, maybe Fezzi's dealing with some of that, too, with his cat. Because the litter box is in the house. And he, uh, it, it was a cat that was an outside cat. Yeah. Let's but face it, we have thousands of excuses. Oh but yeah, yeah. Something wrong. When uh, when Fez is officially put in a hospital, are you guys going to continue the run of Fez show with like yeah. ISDN lines? Absolutely. Oh, good, you know, good to hear. Uh, <laughs> unlike you guys, I really believe in that whole uh, for better or worse thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you really are sticking through thick and thin. God bless you. You're not going to read me about me in the post like you do some people. I'm <laughs> You're a good egg, Noonan. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> Get on there and eke out another show every day. I missed the uh, the post uh, reference. Hmm? Yeah, Was well. I supposed to get that? Yeah. About Anthony? Yeah. yeah. Because he had a... 
Yeah, remember? For better or for worse. Oh, remember Jesus. my big divorce? Roddy, I'm slow today. When, I'm I, sorry, couldn't, when I couldn't remember the uh, anniversary of our wedding? Yeah, okay. Because I mixed it up with uh, Capistrano Swallows Day when the <laughs> swallows come back to Capistrano. So basically, Ronnie <laughs> was embarrassing. saying that he's married to Fezzi. I didn't, that's the part right. I, I, I was well, confused by. Okay. That actually couldn't be. Hey. That wouldn't be as far fetched as if we were, you know, married, let's say. Yuck. Definitely wouldn't be as far fetched because at least one person uh, in that relationship wouldn't have a problem with it. Let's face it, we'd all oh, fuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you think we, uh, Ronnie, you think we could get this Eastside Dave Roland fight uh, going or what? You know, Dave is ready, but I think he's a little uh, outmatched. I think uh, Roland is a shocking kid. He's coming up. He's an up and comer, and everybody cares about him. I, now, well, I suggest Dave. Roland wrote me a letter that he loved me. So it was very weird. Yeah. Wow. I suggested uh, like a mud wrestling or or hot oil wrestling, something a little, a little safer. Well, uh, believe it or not, Dave's a goer. He's ready to go out there and do this, no I matter know. what it is. Roland uh, impressed everybody the other day. And, uh, Ronnie, I said it on our show earlier, and uh, i, I got to step out of character and uh, tell you this is... Oh, it's Opie. Uh, oh, oh, no, it's Greg. Yeah, this is Greg Hughes, the actor that plays oh. Opie on the Opie and Anthony show. Um, I, I, I apologize for uh, what Roland said about Casey's uh, baby that's not born yet. Well, it's very, very big of you to take that stand. That's really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really thought that was a little, uh, a little over the line. Oh my goodness! They just made a big announcement the day before. Everybody's all happy. Yeah. And and then Roland comes rolling in uh, with uh, just uh, the worst thing you could possibly say. Yeah. That was a little too much. I thought Roland but... is not a man to be toyed with. No, but uh... no. But here's the thing: we're men of science. We're not men of superstition. He doesn't have these abilities. Yes. You know? <laughs> Ronnie's take on the whole thing is, yeah, he can't make it happen. That's right. So no matter what he says, okay. uh, it's okay. All right. But suddenly people act like something will happen because Roland wished for it. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ron. Ronnie, uh, you're, you're a great man. Uh, well, thanks, fellas. Noon to three.